In this video, I'd like to share with you how I built recessed shelving inside of a closet. Houses that use standard 2x4 construction have an awful lot of wasted space within them. Now, assuming it's an inside wall, which means there's no insulation, and you don't have a lot of electrical wiring behind the wall, you can actually reclaim and use this space. Okay, let's get started. I've checked the opposite side of the wall I want to cut into. I see no electrical components. There probably isn't any wiring. Using a drywall saw, I cut and removed the sheetrock from the wall that I'm going to build the shelves in. Now, the center stud has to come out. The tool for this, your sawzall with a very long flexible blade. You can actually bend the blade and squeeze it between the sheetrock and the stud and cut all of the screws or nails holding that sheetrock on. Then cut the nails holding the top and bottom of the stud and the stud should just fall right out. The sheetrock was marred up just a little bit by the cutting process, but we can fix that. Just grab some drywall mud and fill them holes. And while you're at it, go ahead and repair and patch up that edge from when you cut the sheetrock out. Sand your mud down smooth. Apply a coat of primer, covering the wood and the sheetrock. Then repaint it the same color as the closet. Even though I'm covering it with shelves, the reason why I painted it is to protect that sheetrock paper from moisture. Now, if your wife should come home from vacation and find out you just cut a hole in her closet, you could stop this process right here and she'd have a closet that's three and a half inches bigger. But if she lets you continue, let's head out to the wood shop. Let's figure out how much wood we need. My opening is 89 inches by 23 inches. We'll need a board for each side, a board that runs across the top, as well as the bottom. When figuring out your shelving, remember, 89 inches was the outside diameter. Remove an inch for the top and bottom board. Now you have 87 inches to work with. Storing books will be my primary use for these shelves. Remember your basic paperback comes in two sizes. Your normal paperback and your large print. My shelves will fit the larger book, so I'll be able to use nine shelves. Now, let's figure out how much wood we need. Nine shelves at 23 inches for a total of 207. Top shelf, bottom shelf, left side, right side. 427 inches works out to be 35.6 board feet. Divide by a standard 8 foot board, we'll need 4.4 boards. Of course, you have to round up, so buy 5 boards. And I have to sneak this into the video. The poster in my garage of this fuzzy little guy is Bounder, which you'll notice sounds an awful lot like my YouTube channel name. Now, the most difficult part about this project is going to be square construction. Or rather, I should say lack of square construction. Every wall stud in my house seems to be crooked, warped, bent, or cupped. For example, I built this nice square bookshelf, placed it up against the wall, the bottom was flush, and I had to put in over an inch of filler at the top. But don't worry, we have a way to fix this. It's imperative during bookshelf construction that your boards not be cupped. If they are, your books won't sit flat. To fix this, before using them, run the boards through your planer. Go back to the closet and cut the outside frame boards to fit within the wall. Now here's the trick to fix the warped stud problem. While keeping your board square, go ahead and trim a little bit off of each board. What you want to do is actually create a gap between the board and the wall. This is our insurance that once we glue this frame together, it will fit. And we can deal with this gap later. As you can see, our boards are currently too wide. All the extra board is going to do is eat up some valuable closet space. Now, unless you're going to be using my book identification system to be shown in a later video, I recommend just trimming that excess board off. The tool for that job? Your table saw. Set your rip width slightly larger than your book. Then run all of your boards through it. Now you can see we have a much better fit. For the next step, we'll be working on the inside of the sideboards. Lay the boards out on your workbench. Mark them so you can keep track of where they go then lay them out flat inside edge up. Now we want to mark on the board where our shelves are going to go. Let's do some quick math. If you have nine shelves, that means you have ten equal spaces. Divide that ten into your inside dimension, 87 inches. That means your boards have to be 8.7 inches apart, or roughly eight and three quarters. I've lightly drawn the lines on so I can sand them off later. Let's verify our math is right. Set the boards on your marks, then make sure your books will actually fit on the shelves. If they do, we can press on. As we install shelving, at least one of the shelves has to be structural. It'll be located in the dead center of the sideboards. I use a dado joint just like this one. We'll be using a router to make our cut, so this is how I set it up. 
Measure the width of your cutting bit, in this case 5 8 Now cut that dimension in half, mark both sides of your center line, and now you have the path that your router bit's going to travel. You then set up a straight edge to guide your router while you're cutting. When you're finished, you have a dado across both your sideboards. However, you'll notice your shelf board won't fit in that hole. Head on back over to the planer and plane the shelves down to fit. Now, you have a decision you have to make. Do you want stationary shelves or adjustable shelves? The easiest route? Stationary. For this, simply cut a scrap piece of wood to use as a guide to properly position your router for your next cut. You'll find in a very short time you're done making all your cuts, which means you're almost ready to put it together. We'll take a look at variable shelving very shortly. But first, remember I mentioned a structural shelf? We need to address that issue. Take your outside frame boards and go back to your closet. Put them back in place ensuring they're square. Hold your center shelf board in place and mark it. Then cut it to fit. The goal here is to remove the sag out of the sideboards. When both sides are square, you've met this requirement. At this point, you're completely finished cutting your outside framework. Before we glue the framework together, we need to create all these holes so that we can make the variable shelving work. The purpose of the holes will be to hold these pins, which in turn will hold our shelves. First, we need to cut a template for the holes. On a piece of paper, I measured out two lines 8.7 inches apart. I picked this distance because of my books. We cut that distance in half, find the center line, then cut it in half again. The result will be five equally distant shelf spacings. And on the width, I brought them in far enough from the side of the board you won't be able to see the pins. Grab a piece of plywood and cut it to the width of your two sideboards. Draw a center line, indicating where one sideboard stops and the other begins. What we're going to do here is exactly the same thing to both sides of the boards. That way everything lines up. Bisect each side of your template. This point right here is the middle. Draw a center line through that point. Now you have something to line your template up on. Then throw a couple staples on to keep the paper in place. Head over to your drill press. Then drill a hole all the way through the plywood everywhere where you want a pin. When I've drilled all the holes on the paper, remove the staples, move the paper up on the template, and use pins from your previous holes to hold it in place. Drill the rest of the holes. Repeat this process for the other side of your template. At this point, we have one small technical detail we really have to deal with. I want to be able to make my shelves 8.7 inches apart. Well, remember the center shelf is a structural shelf and cannot be moved. So I have to base all the holes I drill off of that center shelf. Now the holes we drilled are for the pins, which are in the middle of this bracket. What really matters is this part right here. That's what the bottom of the shelf will be resting on. Here's how we're going to fix that. Lay your template down so that it overlaps your dado cut right here. Remember our paper template had three holes between the shelves? Go ahead and place your shelf pins on the fourth hole. Temporarily install a shelf on the pin and hold it in place. Position the bottom of your shelf 12.7 inches below the bottom of the dado cut. Mark your template at the bottom of the dado cut, and cut the template at that mark. And that's it. You're ready to start drilling. Butt your template up against the center shelf. Drill out each hole just enough to leave an impression in the wood. Set your drill press depth gauge to just a little deeper than your pins. Then go ahead and finish drilling out those holes that you already pre-started. Reinstall the template over the last two holes you drilled. Use drill bits to hold it in place. Then continue the process until you're finished doing the bottom of the board. Now we need to drill up the top of the board. Lay your template over the top two holes, just below the dado cut. Hold it in place with drill bits. Now when you start drilling, make sure you don't drill the hole directly over your dado cut. Skip it. Then finish out the top of the board just like you did the bottom half. That's it. You're all done drilling holes. You can start gluing the frame together. Find a nice flat area to do your glue in. Do double check and make sure your holes are facing inward. As far as glue goes, I like to use Gorilla Glue. This stuff really works. Glue up all six joints. Don't worry, you've got plenty of time to do this. It takes hours for that glue to set. The best clamp to use in this situation would be your trusty strap clamps. They apply even pressure all the way around the frame, as well as make your project square. Double check squareness by measuring corner to corner, and that length should be identical to the other corner to corner. I like to provide extra support by shooting three two-inch brad nails into each of the joints. After the glue is dried, go ahead and sand down that outside edge of the board. Once it's sanded, grab yourself a nice round over bit and get rid of that ugly square edge all the way around. Now I was very lucky. 
I found lots of this extremely thin plywood attached to shipping containers someone was going to throw away. You know, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. If you're not as lucky as me, you can actually buy thin veneers at the store. Go ahead and cut your veneer to size and then glue it onto the back. After you've done that, you're going to have an extremely sturdy framework. The moment of truth. Try fitting it back into the wall. If it didn't fit, we can fix that. Break out your belt sander. Go ahead and sand down those edges that are sticking. It doesn't have to look nice because you can't see this part of the structure anyway. Install your pins. Then measure and cut your shelves to fit between the pins. Hey, this is pretty exciting. It's starting to look like a bookshelf. Stain your project, then cover it with a couple coats of polyurethane. After the polyurethane has dried, you want to clean the holes out again, because some of that polyurethane has gotten down in the holes, now your pins won't fit. You're ready for your final time to put it back in the wall. You want to go ahead and drill holes in all four corners, then countersink the holes. Finally, install screws. Pay very close attention to not torquing the screws so tight as to deform the framework of your shelves. Finally, you can grab a nice cup of tea, sit back, and admire what you've just created. Now that you're through, you have room for another 350 books in your library? Or if you're a single guy, you have a convenient place to store your Battlestar Galactica model collection. Maybe you're a gourmet chef. You can store everything you need to make a fine meal. Perhaps your wife is still mad at you for tearing her closet up. Let me show you how you can make peace with her. Thanks for watching.